In this video, we're going to go over key graphs. Your textbook calls this key graphs, but I've always heard this called parent graphs. But either way, key graphs and parent graphs mean the same thing. So all of these graphs here is just good to have them memorized. If you don't have them memorized, luckily, we have a graphing calculator, and so we can figure it out. But in general, you need to know the shape of these. So if you have a constant function, what this means is that we have a horizontal line. where whatever that B is, that's what it's going through on the Y axis. An identi identity function If we just have X, and I'm going to change my window here because my graph is negative five to five on both X and Y, I'm going to change this just so my graph on my calculator will match my graph on my paper. <clears throat> if you can see, it's just a straight diagonal line. And if I go to table here, I can see if you put in negative four, your Y is negative four. If you put in negative three, your Y is negative three. That's why this is an identity function. Whatever you're putting in is the same thing you're getting out. And so this goes right here. Along that diagonal. So if you have a ruler, Rulers are better, make it a little bit more accurate, but it's not the end of the world, if you don't. So your linear function, this is technically a linear function, right? It's a straight line, as well as this one, it's a straight line. These are all linear functions. But this one, remember, we've already gone over this. Your M tells you what your slope is, and your B tells you what your y-intercept is. And so this can have a steep line. I'll just go ahead and put one right here, which I'm actually going to redo that because I don't like that it looks like it's going through the origin. It can go through the origin if your B is zero. Let's go right here. Okay, so in this case, my B looks like it's negative four, or it can be a really shallow slope. Something like this. Okay, so that's just two separate examples. That when you have a linear function, those lines can kind of go in any direction as long as it is straight and it can touch this Y anywhere. Again, we've already gone over this. This was module one. So let's get into these ones that we are not as familiar with that we haven't quite gone over. You have a square function. <clears throat> so if I put this in my calculator, if I have X squared, and we get graph, here is my graph. It makes a U shape. This is called a parabola. If I hit second table, here's some of my, my numbers. I can't fit a lot of these on here, but I can do negative two, four, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and two negative, or two positive four. So then just kind of make this as precise as you can. There's my parabola. So what happens if I change this to an X cubed? Now it looks like this right here, where this portion almost looks the same as my parabola. But now instead of this going up, now it 
comes down. If I look at my table, I can't put a lot of these on here either. In fact, even less. We've got negative two, negative eight, which is off my graph. But we have negative one, negative one, which is here. Zero, zero, and one, one. Okay, but I do know that this is two negative eight, so, or positive eight, so somewhere up here. And then negative two, negative eight, which would be somewhere down here, maybe. So comes here, and it changes directions and comes up this way. That's actually not very good at all, but hopefully yours looks more like that. That's slightly better. <clears throat> All right, then we have the square root of x. So square root of x. And it comes to right here. So when I look at that table, we get errors all over here. Why is that? Well, my mathematical domain says I cannot take the square root of a negative number. So when I put the square root of negative five, that's imaginary. And that says, nope, we can't do that. So my graph starts at zero, zero. Then I get one, one. Then I get two and about one and a half. three and almost two, and then four, four, two. I always call this my eyebrow graph right here. It kind of looks like an eyebrow, okay? Next we have the cubic root of X. There we go, cubic root of x. Okay, it kind of looks like this one, right? But instead of stopping here, now it comes this way and it changes directions and it comes out this other way. Reason is we can have a cube root, a fifth root, a seventh root, we can have odd roots that have negatives under here. So let's go to negative five is still less than negative two. It's somewhere in this area here. We've got negative one, negative one, zero, zero. We should have one, one. And then five is still gonna be less than two as well over here. So. Okay, we have a reciprocal function. So one divided by X. We're going to learn more about these. This is considered a rational function. Where we have an error at zero because I cannot divide by zero. So it looks like I have one, 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 one. They all have one, one. You have negative one, negative one. You've got negative two and a half. And we have two and a positive half. When I go back to my graph, I'll kind of connect the rest of these dots here. And so this is gonna keep getting closer to that y-axis and closer to that x-axis, but they're never gonna to touch. And same thing here, it's gonna to get closer to this x-axis 
And this way it's gonna get closer to that y-axis, but never touch. What we have right here, I'm gonna put dotted lines. We have what's called asymptotes. And when we get more into rational functions, we're gonna learn more about those. And then lastly, we have the absolute value of X. Which is gonna look like a V. When I go to negative five, I got negative five, five, negative four, four, negative three, three. That always comes out positive. And even when you put the square root of one, two, three, or four, it's still gonna come out positive. So this is going to go to the origin and it's gonna go along those diagonals and then go along these diagonals coming up this way as well. These are your key graphs here. Pause if you need to, to make sure you get those all copied down. And then I showed you a little bit, not with a great detail, but a little bit of how to put that into your calculator in case you don't know when you need to know.